Republican Congressman Mike Turner joins me now from Capitol Hill. He is a senior member of the House Armed Services Committee. Congressman, welcome. Thank you for having me. So uh, we know a briefing just wrapped up, uh, but between administration officials, specific members of Congress, uh, hours ahead of the, the president's big, big speech tonight. Have you heard anything coming out of that meeting, sir? Uh, nothing yet, but I think certainly everyone's looking for the president tonight to make the case that ISIS is a direct threat to the United States, uh, that he intends to use uh, military force and resolve for, to destroy ISIS, uh, that he's going to look to a broader coalition, for the United States not just going alone. People certainly expect that it's going to include, as Secretary Hagel has said, uh, military action both in Iraq and in Syria. Mm -hmm. um, we are hearing uh, about this blank check that the president you know, wants from Congress to fight ISIS. What are you hearing, Congressman Turner, about that? Uh, what specifically are you hearing as far as how that will be um, uh, distributed financially to the fight overseas? You know, I think overall you've heard from Congress that great that the president has not had a plan. And because of that, any congressional action has been you know, premature to even discuss speculatively. You know, what will Congress do if the, if the president does X or Y? Tonight, he's going to have to lay it out. And from that point, Congress obviously will take action. But I hope he goes more beyond just the ISIS issue to really the root cause that we have here. If you look to Chapter 12 of the 9-11 Commission report, they specifically state that this is not just an al-Qaeda or an Osama bin Laden threat to the United States. It's Islamic extremism, Islamic terrorism. The president in his speech in Cairo laying out his strategy for Iraq said that even in addition to pulling the troops out of Iraq, he was going to commit to holding Islamic extremism at bay and supporting the, a territorial integrity and democratic Iraq. He needs to get back to those things, not just an issue of how are we going to militarily attack and hold ISIS back. But, but what about the, the finances? You know, you hear from someone like a Senator Carl Levin saying he, I believe the word was flexibility. He's okay with maybe this notion of a blank check and the flexibility because we know, of course, the fight against terrorism uh, is evolving. It was Senator McCain from, from uh, you know, your party who says, well, if there is no goal, if there is no strategy, then it'd be pretty tough to get that kind of money from taxpayers. Well, absolutely. I think no one looks to a blank check. They look to what a strategy is, what a plan is. They look to the president to recommit himself to seeing that Islamic extremism is a threat to the United States. And what is the strategy and plan for Congress today to take action to authorize funding for this and to appropriate funding? Um, I don't think anybody wants to just say, you know, for President Obama, certainly whatever you want to do or whatever this goes, uh, without any consultation with Congress, you should have approval. Uh, Congressman, you brought up 9-11 a minute ago. It's hard not to talk about it. I was just walking around um, Ground Zero the, the, just this weekend, and I know you you were just part of a classified briefing, um, you know, on worldwide threats, what, yesterday. Uh, what can you share here? It, it, it's a grim picture. Um, you know, I was speaking yesterday to Representative Klein from Minnesota, and he suggested everyone go back and read that chapter of the 9-11 Commission report because it lays out specifically where we are. If you take your eye off the ball, if you don't hold the pressure on Islamic extremism and terrorism, it's going to grow. It's not just an issue of al-Qaeda or killing Osama bin Laden, that it's in fact looking at that as an existential threat to the United States and having a strategy to target it. The president has not. He withdrew our troops, uh, let uh, Iraq fall into um, you know, the disarray that we see today. His strategy and plan has got to go far beyond ISIS. It's got to be recommitting the United States to a policy of addressing Islamic extremism and terror. Far beyond ISIS, I mean, who knows even how long? It seems, in a sense, such an abstract concept. It's an enemy of which, you know, in so much intelligence in Syria, the U.S. doesn't even have. Right. And well, the, but the president, because he's allowed so much time to elapse, has a difficulty here in putting his plan together. Because even if he degrades or uh, compromises ISIS and their capabilities, Who's going to go in and hold this land? Who's going to fill that gap in space? You know, we certainly saw in Libya where the president had no post-Qaddafi regime plan, uh, went in and did regime change. Libya is now in chaos. The president, if he doesn't have a post-ISIS plan, could similarly see that type of chaos envelop uh, in Iraq. This, this is going to take great resolve on the part of this president besides just limited airstrikes. Just to push on that, just talking to Fareed Zakaria, who I consider pretty intelligent, knows a lot of things about the world, you know, and he wrote a piece recently in the Washington Post just sort of pushing back on that and saying, listen, even he was surprised to see this, once all these dictators fell, once we saw the, the time post-Arab post, post -Arab Spring, no one could have predicted what, what would have happened in, in Egypt and Libya uh, and the like. Uh, Congressman Mike Turner, I thank you so much for, for taking the time to come on with me. Uh, and once again, just a reminder to all of us as we will sit and watch the president's speech tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern. You can watch it live right here with us on CNN.